Hello, welcome back to the channel. Um, today we're going to be watching 10 Secrets the Vatican Doesn't Want You to Know. Um, this is going to be from a channel, Origins Explained. I've never seen any of their work before, so I don't know what to expect. But we'll just jump right in, take a look at it. Hi, it's Katrina. My friend David is going to be helping you out with the voiceover today, so I hope you enjoy. <laughs> Number 10, Missing Books of the Bible. In the year 1684, the Vatican removed 14 books from the Bible. To this day, there is no explanation as to why. And the Vatican is happier with the general population not knowing. There were originally 80 books in the Bible when mm. it was translated from Latin to English back in 1611. These days, there are only 66. The missing books are known as the Apocrypha, which in Greek means hidden. The missing books include Esdras, Tobit, Judith, the Wisdom of Solomon, the Songs of the Three Holy Children, Bell and the Dragon, Maccabees, and the Prayer for Manasses. Even stranger is that Jesus' name was spelled Aesus before these 14 books were removed. Hmm. The church changed the pronunciation and spelling. If they had never changed anything, you'd pronounce Jesus' name as Yehushua. Why were these mysterious books removed? There are many theories. Some say the contents of the books didn't fit in with the Roman Catholic Church's narrative, and so they were simply taken out. Some believe they made the Bible too long and too confusing, so they were removed. But there is no real answer. None of the books were particularly nefarious, and they don't seem to include any secrets. But for whatever reason, well, then somebody must have a copy if they know what's in them. them from the Bible so that the word of God was exactly what they wanted it to be. Number nine, Sounds about alien right. Alien influences. Russian professor Genrik Ludwig allegedly gained access to the secret Vatican archives in the 1920s and came upon some extremely disturbing information. Before I keep going, keep in mind that this has never been 100% confirmed. The story has been circulating for nearly a century, but we don't actually have the evidence that Ludwig was inside the secret archives. The story goes that Ludwig was allowed into the archives, where he discovered over 53 miles, 85 kilometers of shelving, and 35,000 volumes of catalogues. There were documents from over 12 centuries of European history. While he was browsing through the seemingly endless corridors of ancient texts, he started finding things that didn't make sense. There were papers that discussed how aliens had influenced all the most ancient civilizations of the world, from the Egyptians to the Mayans. He also allegedly found historical records of nuclear-style weapons being used in ancient times. One text explained how the walls of Babylon were melted by a weapon that output monstrous temperatures. The professor was never able to leave the Vatican with these documents, so conveniently for his story, no one except him has ever actually seen them. Still, it's interesting that the information about aliens visiting ancient societies and helping them to progress does fit with the known evolution of society. In the fourth millennium BC, the Sumerians went from a bunch of primitive hunters to building walls, laying down irrigation canals, and coming up with a writing system. It could very well be that the aliens helped them, and that the Vatican has known about it all this time. Then again, Professor Ludwig may have just been generating a hoax. Number 8. True. The Antichrist. In 2010, Reverend Gabriel Amorth was 85 years old. He was also the chief exorcist in the Vatican, with a history of treating over 70,000 cases of demonic possession. Wow. He had a small office on the third floor of Vatican City, where he operated as a very real exorcist for 25 years. In an interview with the Italian newspaper La Repubblica, the Reverend defended his work and freely admitted that he believes the devil is a pure and invincible spirit of evil. He also told the reporters that the devil can speak many languages, that he can transform himself at will, and he can stay hidden when necessary. The very fact that the Vatican has sanctioned over 70,000 exorcisms is pretty Crazy. shocking, but perhaps even more shocking, but perhaps even more shocking, 
is that when the Reverend discussed an attack by the devil in 1981, Gabriel Amorth claimed the devil infiltrated the Vatican, tried to directly attack John Paul II, and then in 2008, the devil got back into the Vatican again and possessed a Swiss-Italian woman named Susanna Milo. On Christmas Eve, she attempted to push down Pope Benedict XVI, but was foiled by the pontifical Swiss guard. She went back the next year on Christmas Eve during midnight mass and knocked the Pope over. It's very likely that Susanna was just suffering from some kind of mental illness. But according to the Reverend, he was a servant of the devil. The Reverend passed on in 2016, hmm. leaving behind a rather bizarre legacy of demonic paranoia in the Vatican. What do you think? Was the woman genuinely possessed? Number seven. So I think a lot of the so-called possessions are mental illness. Um, I don't know how you guys feel about that, but that's how I feel. Um, and we've looked at some other videos, um, or at least I have. I don't remember if I did it on this channel or not. Um, but where your family has killed one of their family members because they became convinced that their family member was being possessed by you know an evil spirit or the devil or whoever. And they wound up starving them, torturing them to death, whatever. And really, they needed help. And it's a shame. And I imagine, I mean, I don't know, there could be such a thing as possession. That could be real, but I doubt it was real in 70,000 different cases. That's just my opinion. You feel free to leave your opinion in the comments. The Three Secrets of Fatima. The Vatican may look like a simple religious organization from the outside. I don't think it looks simple. But they are a lot more mystical than people realize. They have their prophecies and their secrets most of which they would prefer outsiders to not know about. The biggest prophecy of all was delivered on May 13, 1917. Three young Portuguese shepherds were visited by an apparition of the Virgin Mary. They were visited six times between May and October. Throughout these visits, the Virgin Mary gave the children three prophetic secrets. These secrets were apocalyptic visions of the end of the world. After hearing about how the Vatican believes they're under constant attack by the devil, it should come as no surprise that they take these secret prophecies very seriously. Lucia Santos became the speaker for the three shepherd girls. In 1941, she finally revealed to the Vatican two of the secret prophecies. They were written down and taken away. In 1943, the Bishop of Liria asked to reveal the third secret. But Lucia refused. She said she didn't think God was ready for her to unveil the secret just yet. Mm. But later that year, the bishop had enough and ordered that Lucia write it down. She did, but sealed it in an envelope with directions not to open it until the year 1960. The first secret was revealed by Lucia in her memoir to be a vision of hell. It's pretty graphic mm. and pretty terrible, and we don't need to go into it here. Mm. The second secret had to do with World War I and World War II. She okay. predicted World War I would end, but that another war would quickly follow, should men continue to offend God. And in that, she was right. <laughs> the third secret is hugely controversial. She gave a vivid description of the persecution of Christians in the 20th and 21st century, along with a vision of the apocalypse. But there are many who believe the Vatican did not publish what Lucia wrote, instead keeping her secret to themselves and making up something to satisfy the public. Number six, UFO over Vatican City. In 2007, a mysterious orange disc was spotted hovering over the Vatican. Witnesses saw what can only be described as a silver orange glowing saucer in broad daylight hovering over the dome of St. Peter's Basilica. It was photographed, many different people saw it, and then all mention of it was gone. As quickly as it caught the attention of mm, citizens around the globe, the UFO visiting the Vatican was out of everyone's memory. But that doesn't mm. change the fact that it happened. Something strange and seemingly alien hovered above the Vatican for several minutes in 2007. The mystery is trying to figure out what it was so, and what it wanted. If everybody took photographs, moment, where are they? Really was an alien ship and it really was just lurking above the Vatican, we have to assume that they knew each other already. 
It could be that the Vatican has indeed known about extraterrestrials for centuries. The ship may have been dropping off a dignitary to meet with the Pope. For all we know, the Pope himself could be an alien. But of course, this is all just speculation. Yeah. <laughs> there was something strange in the sky that day. But nobody has any possible way of knowing if it truly did come from outer space. All right, let's see if we can you find a photograph. Do you think the Vatican is in contact with extraterrestrial beings? Let me know your theories in the comments, no matter how crazy they are, before the end of the video. Number five, the lost gospel. There is allegedly written evidence that Jesus Christ married Mary Magdalene and had babies. The evidence comes in the form of a manuscript from the sixth century, but it was translated from Greek to the ancient language of Syriac. The manuscript allegedly tells the story of Jesus Christ as an adult, which is never discussed in the Bible. We see his birth and his death, but not the 30 years between. Hmm. The manuscript tells a story of Jesus Christ as a sexual person who fell in love with Mary Magdalene and had some babies. This is obviously controversial for a whole lot of reasons. Hmm. Firstly, the manuscript is unreliable. It is a real piece of work that was sitting in the British Library, but nobody really knows where it came from or exactly when it was written. Hmm. Also, the manuscript paints Mary Magdalene as the daughter of God and the co-redeemer of humanity. In other words, she was just as important to the story as Jesus. Oh, a woman? A woman we can't be having that. With the Vatican, who wanted to whitewash Jesus and turn Christians into prudes. <laughs> Many historians believe Jesus may have lived a much more human lifestyle than the Vatican wants you to think. Number four, profiting from hypocrisy. The Vatican prospers frequently from things they don't believe in. They have a long history of wealth, massive assets, and financial power and influence, right. despite being a religious entity. As an example, you probably didn't know that the Vatican invested millions of euros in getting the film Rocketman produced. This seems like a conflict of interest, considering Rocketman was a film about Elton John finding happiness in his marriage to his husband, David, right. a relationship extremely frowned upon by the church. But even though that's what the movie was about, the Vatican had no problem investing roughly $1 million in getting it made wow. so that they could get a piece of the pie. Hmm. But it's a bit more complicated than that. The Secretariat of State is always investing money. In this case, they invested tens of millions in the Centurion Global Fund. This fund went on to back several films in Hollywood. Those investors kicked back money to the Vatican. The Vatican probably didn't know exactly what they were investing in. Oh, I'm sure they did. Didn't mind taking the money. Yeah. Number three. We'll take the money the for anything. Trail. In the year 897, Pope Stephen VI went through a lot of trouble to put a dead man on trial. It was one of the most bizarre things the Vatican ever did at least that we know about. <laughs> the remains of the former Pope were put on trial by his successor. Pope Formosus had already been dead for a few months and had no real way of defending himself or his honor. Nonetheless, he was disinterred, put in robes, and then stuck on the papal throne to be handed justice. A wow. deacon was even appointed to speak on behalf of the corpse. What followed will seem like insanity. Pope Stephen VI accused the former Pope in front of an audience and hurled words at him as though he were screaming at a real, living person. The dead Pope was, at the end of the farcical trial, found guilty of usurping the papacy. In other words, he stole the throne of the Pope. Stephen VI then had all his acts while officially the Pope labelled null and void. Everything Pope Pornosus had done was undone. Three of his fingers were cut off and his body was it's cast dead. into the river. Shortly after, Weird. Pope Stephen VI was thrown in prison <laughs> and then strangled to death. The whole point wow. is that being the Pope wasn't the best job in the medieval days. They were normally complete lunatics. It was more political than religious, and most of them died young. The successor to Stephen VI was Romanus. He lasted 92 days before being killed. His successor was Theodore II, and he didn't last more than two weeks. Wow. Who knew that the papacy was so rife with high-octane drama and violence? Number two, the secret archives. There is, there is no place on this planet more secret than the Vatican's secret archives. 
There are countless rumors and conspiracy theories surrounding what they're hiding down there, inside what has been described as an underground fortress, but we just don't know. Everything in the archives is so secretive that the Vatican only allows entry to the most trusted scholars over the age of 75. This is undoubtedly so that even if the scholars wanted to spill the beans, they'd come down with dementia before they ever could. And while some say there are alien bodies in the archives and wild things like time machines, none of that is probably true. The truth is that the archives are full of correspondence relating to the Pope. They also hold treasure from the Catholic Church. And because this is the Catholic Church we're dealing with, they obviously don't want everyone gawking at their treasures. We do know of some artifacts being held in the archives. There's a letter from Mary, Queen of Scots, before she was killed in 1587. There are documents relating to the excommunication of Martin Luther. The transcripts from the trial against the Knights Templar are housed here. Anything important relating to the church over the past 1,200 years can be found in the archives. But a lot of this stuff is sensitive material, and so the church is never going to let the public get a hold of it. Even if they appear to open the archives to anyone interested, it'll probably be a half-truth. The real secrets will be stashed away in an even more secure archive somewhere out of our reach. Number one, the highest crime rate. There's one thing about Vatican City that they don't advertise to tourists. They have one of the highest crime rates in the entire world. Wow. Statistics show that in Vatican City, 1 to 1.5 crimes are committed each year per person. Hmm. Does that mean you're going to get robbed and murdered on a visit to the city? Probably not. Vatican City has one of the world's highest crime rates per capita, and in truth, this isn't a big surprise, considering they're the smallest country in the world in size and population. There are about 1,000 people living here, mostly nuns and priests, but it's not them committing the crimes. There are 18 million tourists who travel each year to Vatican City. Many of these tourists are criminals. When you stack the pickpockets and shoplifters up against the actual citizens of Vatican City, the crime rate goes way up. Yes, Vatican City has the worst crime rate in Europe. However, it's only because along with being a hub for religious pilgrims, it's also paradise for petty criminals who want to steal your wallet. What do you think is the Vatican's biggest secret? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. That's interesting. Um, I, I think even in today's world that the the Vatican is a lot to do with politics um, and not so much religion. I mean, individual popes might be more religious than others, but I think they are very involved in politics. Um, and probably if people knew more about the actual history, they maybe wouldn't want to be Catholic. You know, I, a lot of religions seem to um, have risen up based on, you know, acquiring power and wealth as opposed to actually believing in God and uh, wanting to worship God. And that's really something you can do all by yourself. You don't even need to belong to a, per a church, you know, it, I don't know. So I, I think it would be interesting to go through those archives. I imagine there's really some interesting stuff, historical facts, um, I mean, you can see how rich they are for what they allow you to see. So you can only imagine how much more riches are in those archives. Um, and they certainly don't share it with the poor of their parishes. So I don't know. I don't have the highest opinion of the Catholic Church, but that's just me. It's a personal opinion. No one needs to agree with me. Um, but I do thank you for watching the show and coming to visit. Hope you have a great day. And I hope to see you at another video. Thank you.